Advanced Strat Hockey builds on the basic version by adding more offensive and defensive controls for each coach. It also plays more to the individual player's strengths. The main components of the advanced version of Strat Hockey are much the same as in the basic version with a few additions, like the game board and markers. Like in the basic version, the first components are the action and split deck cards. The split deck used in the advanced version is the same deck as the basic version. You can use the deck to resolve split chances by using the random number at the top of the card, numbers from 1 to 20, or, like I do, I could use my trusty old D20. Breakaways and rebounds are used like they are in the basic version, plus the split deck helps you resolve intimidation, passing, injuries, and assists. In advanced, the advanced action card deck is used in place of the small basic action deck. The advanced deck is set up exactly like the basic deck. Count off 10 cards and insert a forward line change card. Count off 5 more, insert a defensive line change card. And finally, count off 5 more action cards and add the remaining forward line change card. Like the basic action deck, the advanced deck is also used as the game clock. The results you receive from the action deck are dictated by coaches' offensive and defensive levels that are set before each play begins. The power play and shorthanded results on the bottom of the advanced action cards are used for super advanced power plays. The number in the black circle at the bottom of the right of the card is used as a split result for super advanced penetration. The game board is needed in the advanced version to track the level of offense and defense that each coach sets before the drop of each puck. Changes to these levels can be made only before a face-off or a line change. They cannot be adjusted on the fly. In gameplay, the visiting team must make their initial offense and defense alignment, then the home team can counter. So what do the numbers mean? Well, the blue circles are used to set up the types of offensive pressure. A setting of two is a standard offense, a well-balanced attack. This offense provides plenty of scoring opportunities with less defensive protection than a conservative setting of one. Most teams will start off with this setting. An offensive setting of one is for a very conservative attack. A team in this setting is very difficult to penetrate against and has very few opportunities to score. A team in this setting may be successful in protecting a lead. In an offensive setting of three, the team on the ice is looking to score with little regard to their own defense. A team would choose to be in a three offense when hoping to come from behind or to build a lead. The numbers in the red circles denotes the number of four checkers each coach is using to exert pressure. With no four checkers, a team will be in a complete defensive mode. Their opponent will find it very easy to clear their own end, but will find it very hard to penetrate for an inside shot. A defense with a three four checkers tends to have more opportunities to penetrate, but are weaker defensively. The offense and defense alignments are directly related as shown by the lines connecting the blue and red circles. For example, a conservative offense of one can either have zero or one four checkers, while a balanced attack of two can have one or two four checkers. Once an advanced action card is put into play, you reference the offensive team's offensive level on the leftmost column and the number of their opponent's four checkers across the top. The offensive level of two has split readings like the basic action cards, one row for home team and one for the visitors. Like in the basic game, once the 30 cards are played, the period comes to an end. After three sets of 30 cards have been played, it's the end of regulation time. So let's see that in play. In front of me I have set up the 2010-2011 Stanley Cup Final. Period 3, the Bruins are winning 3 to nothing at the top of the period. The Vancouver Canucks are a little bit desperate to score, so 
the Vancouver Canucks here. This is their defense on offense uh, settings here. I have them in a three offense, a very aggressive offense with three four checkers all out. They're sending everything at Tim Thomas, everything, including the kitchen sink. The Bruins at this point in the game weren't sitting back on their heels in a, in a very conservative uh, uh, offense. They were actually still trying to score. It was 3-0. Brad Marchand scored uh, his second of the game, uh, making it 4-0, which was the final in reality here. So we're going to pick this up at 3-0. They're with one four checker. So they're they're in a, a balanced offense, a little bit on the, the defensive side of that offense, where Vancouver is completely uh, all out. So the puck has been dropped. I'll show the face-off uh, later on in this video. Puck has been dropped. Alexander Burroughs gets the puck. So we progress play just like in the base game by turning over uh, a uh, action card, this time the advanced action card. And we're going to cross-reference the offensive team's offensive level, which in Vancouver here would be three, and the Boston Bruins' defensive level, our number four checkers, in this case one, so we're going to cross-reference four or three with one. Now, this card here, an offensive three team here, um, is passing C's throughout. So it doesn't matter how many four checkers, they're going to get a, a passing C. So, but if it was uh, the home, or sorry, if it was the visitors, the Boston Bruins that had, have the puck, they're in a two offense, and it would go, uh, we'd cross-reference the Vancouver Canucks three four checkers. So if it was the Boston Bruins, it would be, opponent defense B. But as it is, um, the, the Vancouver Canucks are in an offense of three. They're going to refer to Alexander Burroughs' passing C column. So let's do that really quickly and let's progress play here. So the passing C says, loses puck inside shot for right wing. And then the opponent uh, has a, an opportunity to uh, intimidate. But I, I'll show that in a later part in the video game. Or, or sorry, later part in this video. The second component of advanced strat hockey is the same as the basic version, charts. The play chart is used for the face-offs, power plays, intimidation, and penetration. The supplementary play chart is used mostly in the super advanced version of the game. The passing L and goalie penetration retaliation charts can be used for advanced strat as well as the super advanced timing chart. The third component, like the basic version, is the player cards and dice. The player's offense, defense, penalty, and breakaway penetration ratings are still applicable. Added to those ratings are the player's face-off and intimidation ratings. The tendency rating is represented by 1 to 5 stars and is found under the player's name. The more stars a player has, the more likely the player would shoot from the inside, whereas a player with few stars would more than likely take an outside shot. This rating is only a guide. The skating rating found on the player's card is used in the super advanced version for shorthanded penalty killing. The intimidation rating on the player's card is actually a range of numbers that reflects how adept the player is at taking away the puck from the offensive team when they're attempting to complete a pass for an inside shot. The wider the range, the higher the second number is, the better. How does the intimidation work? Well, whenever a player's pass results in an inside shot followed by an intimidation reading, the defensive team's coach can choose to intimidate to attempt to take away the puck. However, attempting to intimidate on a passing play increases the chance of drawing a penalty for the intimidator. So after the defensive coach claims his player is attempting to intimidate, a split card is drawn and you can refer to the intimidation section. There are three outcomes in an intimidation attempt. 1. If the number shown on the split card falls in the defensive player's intimidation rating, the defensive player has successfully taken away the puck cleanly and play progresses by turning the next action card. 2. If the number shown on the split card is greater than the defensive player's intimidation rating, the pass is completed and the player whom is the recipient of the pass follows through with the inside shot. 3. The split card shows that the opponent takes away the puck or fails to take away the puck and a penalty is possible for the defensive player trying to intimidate. If you get this result, draw a split card or use a d20 and refer to the intimidation chart to see if he draws a penalty. 
The PowerPlay 16 pertains to the Super Advanced PowerPlay only. If the opponent fails to take away the puck, but draws a penalty anyway, the pass is completed and the inside shot is taken. Consider this a delayed penalty. The play continues until the defensive team gains control of the puck, the offensive team scores, or a faceoff is called for. During a delayed penalty, the offensive team can pull their goalie and add an extra skater. The team with the extra skater refers to the power play section of the advanced action card. Whenever the readings refer to any player, the puck goes to the extra skater. The penalties in the advanced version are resolved the same way as the basic version with two exceptions. The first being, three action cards are turned over to simulate the penalty time instead of two. And, instead of stopping play once all of the shots are taken and having a face-off like the basic version, play continues. The penalized player returns to the ice and play continues with the power play team now having the offense. The offensive team's power play unit will stay on the ice until either a goal is scored, face-off occurs, or the defensive team gains control of the puck. The same holds true for the defensive team. On a reading of an outside shot, and not an outside shot only, the offensive coach can try to move the puck into the slot for a higher percentage inside shot. Moving the puck inside can be attempted in two ways in the advanced version. One, like the basic version, is by trying to penetrate the opposition's defense using the advanced penetration charts. Unlike the basic version, you refer to both the player who is trying to move the puck inside's penetration rating and the opponent's defensive rating. The second method of penetration is by trying to complete a pass into the slot to a teammate. If a pass is attempted, draw a split card and refer to the passing section. Face-off ratings on all players' cards are used with the advanced face-off charts to resolve all face-offs. The higher the rating, the better the face-off taker is. So face-offs in the advanced version, uh, the basic version we used this basic chart which just had one column. In the advanced version, we have several columns. And how we would derive which column to use, we're going to look at the centerman's face-off ability. So. In this game that I have set up here, I have David Krejci with a plus one face-off rating and Hendrik Sedin with a face-off plus two face-off rating. So how you would derive which column to look for here is you would take the higher and subtract the lower. So Hendrik Sedin with a plus two, David Krejci with a plus one, that leads the Vancouver Canucks and Hendrik Sedin, the superior face-off taker with a plus one. So you'd use the plus one column here and we would use our d20 or you could use the split number here four. Uh, I'm going to use my d20. Drop it down my dice tower. Here. So I got a one. It shows me here in the one column and I'm going to look at the plus one because you know, we have we did the subtraction. Hendrik Sedin is a plus one or the Vancouver Canucks are a plus one on the face-off on this particular face-off. So the superior team, Hendrik Sedin, wins the face-off, drops it back to the left defense and you progress play from there. That's the end of the advanced rules as they are in the book. My next video will be about some of the supplementary rules you can use to enhance the advanced gameplay. I hope this video was helpful. I'd like to once again thank my brother Jim for the music, and for my cat, Dutch, who helped me with all the editing. Big thanks goes out as well to Hal Richman for his wonderful games that enrich all of our Stratomatic lives. Check out my fellow baseball strat enthusiast, at Tenacious Strat, Tabletop Baseball, Baseball Demos, Fanomatic, and Espo Strat. Keep rolling them, everybody, and Strat on. Oh, and have a good day, eh?